I'm reading at verse number 53, Mark chapter 6, and we'll begin reading at verse 53. Here's what it says. And when they had passed over, they came into the land of Gennesaret and drew to the shore. And when they were come out of the ship, straightway they knew him and ran through that whole region round about and began to carry about in beds those that were sick where they heard he was. And whithersoever he entered into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch if it were but the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. Amen. Chapter number seven. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say with unwashed hands, they found fault. Amen. Thus ends the reading of the word. I'd like to just um, put a tag on this message. Don't major on the minors. Okay. <laughs> Don't major on the minors. Amen. Amen. Let me start out by saying this. God is sovereign. Amen. 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 God's sovereign. And, and, and in his sovereignty are, uh, you, know, you know, when we talk about God, there are divine attributes that only God has. And I'm going to just name some, just a couple. Just a couple. And the ones that we are most familiar with. One of the divine attributes that only God has is that he is immutable. I believe that uh, uh, Sister Marcia made mention of that. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. Amen. God is immutable. That is a divine attribute that only God has. A amen. amen. Now, now, one of these days in the distant future, we might take on some of that. Because when we go to heaven, we'll be there forever and ever, and we won't change. Amen. But while we are in these earthly bodies, amen, we change. Amen. We change up. Amen. At the drop of the hat, we change up. We can be happy one moment and sad the next. Amen. We, we can have, have friends that we call our friends. Amen. One moment and the next moment, those same friends become our enemies. We do change. Amen. I, I did say I was going to talk a little bit about the attributes of God. One of the other attributes that other than him being immutable is that God is also omnipotent. There is no power like the power of God. He is omnipotent in power and authority. All powerful. There's no power beyond the power of God. A amen, somebody. He is omnipotent. And he's also omnipresent. Amen. No matter where you are, God can reach you. No matter what condition you're in, God can reach you. Amen. No matter where you are, you can be way over there in South Africa, in, in China, in Russia, in Australia, up there in the, uh, uh, the Arctics. A amen. Or way in South uh, uh, America. It don't matter where you are. You could be in a in a crack house. Amen. Or the other house. Amen. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. It don't matter where you are. God can reach you. Amen. Because He is omniscient. I mean, omnipresent. 
But, but here's another one. He's also um, omniscient. God knows everything. Some of us try to act like we know everything. Amen. But, but God is the one who knows everything. Say it, Brad. Say it. Everything. There's nothing that can be hid from God's knowledge. His knowledge is too high. Amen. It's too wide. His knowledge. He is omniscient and, 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 and he's also eternal. God is eternal. He's the beginning. Everything in between. And the end. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the first and he's the last. Amen. These are divine attributes that only God has. Amen, somebody. Amen. Hey, you know that? Oh, that, that car is wrong. I'm going by my watch. I'm going by my watch. Listen, I, I, I'm taking th that time. I wanted to be able to tell you about the divine attributes because God knows. God knows. He's all powerful. He's, he's, he, he, he has all authority. He's every place present at the same time. But he's only in the heart and mind and soul of those who have been redeemed. Amen. Amen. He's not in the wood. He's not in the building. He's not in the materials. He's in us. Amen. And he can do with us whatever he wants, whenever he wants, however he wants. Because he is sovereign. Now let's be clear about something. Amen. I, I need you to hold on to what I just got done saying. Now let's be clear about something. Let's be clear. All rituals and traditions are not necessarily ne negative. Amen. Uh, let, 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 let me say that again. All rituals and traditions are not necessarily negative. Amen. Amen. But 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 traditions do not rise to the level of doctrine. Amen. A Amen. There is a difference between traditions and doctrine. But some of us want to make our traditions doctrine. Some of us want to make traditions doctrine. You know doctrine doesn't change. Doctrine is solid. Amen. We ought to know what the doctrines of the church are. Amen. We know what the traditions of the church are, but we really ought to concentrate more heavily on the doctrines of the church, not the traditions of the church. Amen. The, 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 the Roman Catholic Church, they focus on their traditions. Amen. And, and they do focus on their doctrine too. But, but, but sometimes their traditions uh, supersede doctrine. But that should not be the case here in the Baptist church. Amen. Tradition is subservient to doctrine. Amen, somebody. Now let me give you an example. Most of us um, were taught that uh, when you come in from the outside, when you come in from the outside, you come into your house, the, uh, your mama and dad used to always say, before you do anything, before you do anything, wash your hands. That's right, say it, say it. Amen. That's not doctrine. No. Amen. Amen. But it is a, a, a good tradition. Amen. Remember now, all traditions are not negative. Amen. There are some great and good and, 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 and worthwhile traditions that we ought to keep. Amen. And some folks are required to take off their shoes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. When they come into the house. Yeah. Hey, after all, when you think about where your feet have been, yeah. amen, the dirt and the scum and the foulness and the trash and the mess that's out there, amen, when you walk into the house, you're bringing it in. And got kids and everyone else playing around on the floor, babies, you know, they're they all in the mess that you done wipe your feet with on the rug. So some folks have a tradition that you take your shoes off when you come into the house. Amen. Amen. Because they don't want you tracking that mess all over. Because you can't see it. Everything's not visible. Amen. Well, let me let me let me let me hasten on. I, I mean, I really got to hasten on now. Uh, most all churches have Sunday school educational programs. Amen. And 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 you know what time they start. Amen. Start at. 
9.30. Most churches, amen, start their Sunday school program at what time? 9.30. 9.30, amen. And, 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 and the regular uh, morning service, the morning worship service, starts at what time? 10.45 or 11 o'clock, amen. Remember now, that is a tradition. Now, remember the title of this message is Don't Major on the Minors. Amen. Let me, let me, let me give you another one of the traditions. Uh, uh, women, amen, were, and in some cases, they still are, a amen, are prohibited from wearing slacks and pants, a amen, in the sanctuary. As a matter of fact, I just was at a meeting on Thursday night, and, and I learned that there's a church that's got a sign on their door when you come in that all women must wear a skirt or a dress. No pants, no slacks are allowed in the sanctuary by women. I'm just... I'm just telling you, amen, and if we happen to be invited to church, I want you to know, y'all can't go in that church now, women, where it slaps, amen, now some of y'all might say, well, I guess I won't be gone, amen, but it is a tradition, amen, it's a tradition, it's not doctrine, and some churches only ordained ministers and ordained deacons are permitted to officiate and serve communion. Amen. Amen. That is a tradition. It's not doctrine. Amen. Amen. So don't major on the minors. Amen. Amen. Funeral services, for an example. You know, when, 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 when funerals are held, amen, you, you know that the family is, is called together. They line up at the front of the church, and then they process in, and then they view the body, and then take a seat, right? That is a tradition. It's not doctrine. So we should not major on the minors. Amen. 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 As a church body, we are expected that we recognize special holidays. A amen. Now we just got we we're almost through March. February is Black History Month. Amen. And then in January you got to deal with Martin Luther King holiday and. Uh, I don't know, there are many others in there too, January. Oh, so you got New Year's, and then you got Christmas, and then you got Thanksgiving, then you got Halloween. A amen. These are all traditions. Amen. And so we got to be careful about the kind of themes that we are um, utilizing and, and requiring. You know, I mean, I expect to hear something about whatever that holiday is when you come to church. Amen. No, what we got to do is stop majoring on the minors. Right. Amen. 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 There are, there's doctrine and there are traditions. Only certain kinds of musical instruments can be played in the church. Amen. Amen. In some churches, you're only going, you, in, you may not even find no drums. Amen. Amen. In some churches, there might be a piano or maybe an organ, and that's it. Don't you be bringing no drums. Don't you be bringing no trumpets or no, no, no uh, violins or, or saxophones and none of that. Amen. That is not a doctrine. That is a tradition. Now, now I'm making a big deal about that, right? I'm making a big deal about that because we need to understand that, tra that, that traditions are subject to change. Amen. 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 And, and I, I know we haven't had intercessory prayer. Right. Amen. Amen. Now, intercessory prayer is not a tradition. Intercessory prayer is a doctrine. Amen. 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 It is a doctrine because Amen. prayer is a doctrine. Yes. And God requires us to go to the throne of grace on behalf of others. Amen. Amen. That's not just a tradition. Now, when we do it is a tradition. 
Amen. Whether we do it in the beginning or whether we do it at the end, that is a, or in the middle, that is a tradition. A amen. So let's not major on the minors. Now, now one reason uh, that um, we have these traditions is that we want to help people to assimilate. That's why you got traditions. Traditions are in place to help people assimilate to our way of doing things. That's really why they are. Amen. 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 In our text, I got to get to it real quickly. In our text, we see that, that Jesus and his disciples had, 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 had come to this place called Gennesaret. And while they were at this place called Gennesaret, uh, when they heard that, when the people from the cities and the countries and the town heard that Jesus was in town, they hurried up and got there. Because they knew that, that there was a man who could perform miracles on the sick, who raised the dead, who, 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 who fed 5,000 plus with, with two small fish and five barley loaf. So they ran, and, and some said that, listen, if you could just touch the, 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 the garment, if you could just touch his garment, they was getting healed. That's right. Well, let me say this to you. It, it, it don't stop there. Because there were some, some super religious folks there were some super religious folks that also heard that he was in town. Yeah. And chapter number seven says that these super religious folks showed up. Yeah. You know, and these, these folks were, were people who had authority. Mm -hmm. They had status among the Israelites. Right. Matter of fact, they had a group called the same, they belonged to a group called the Sanhedrin. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees belonged to them. And then they had their uh, sidekicks, the scribes. Amen. The doctors of the law, you know, the, 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 the theologians and the scholars of the law, they came too. And, and when they came, they, they, they noticed that Jesus' disciples, now let me clarify one thing. I, I, you know, hang, hang in there with me for a moment. Because you are a disciple doesn't mean that you are a Christian. Because you are a learner, because you are a student of the Word of God, does not make you a Christian. There were 12 disciples, and one of them was a devil. So understand, just because you are a disciple, and because you are a learner, and because you are a follower, does not make you a Christian. Amen. Amen. And that's right. Amen. 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 The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that's what makes you a Christian. Amen. Oh, let me, let me, let me, let me hasten, hasten on here. Ignorance. Because Jesus does deal with ignorance. And let me say this. Ignorance, when it is mixed with jealousy, ignorance. You know, I'm not using ignorant, the word ignorance in a condescending way. I'm using ignorance as lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. When ignorance... Lack of knowledge uh -huh. is mixed with jealousy, mm -hmm. envy. Right. You see that? Mm -hmm. When it's mixed with, with, with those three things, when, it's, when, when ignorance is mixed with jealousy, envy, and lust, mm -hmm. it is a sure recipe for a toxic, troublesome outcome. Amen. 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 Did you get that? When ignorance mixed with jealousy, 
You know, people get jealous about oh, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and yeah. You, see, you, you can't always see jealousy. Right. You can't see jealousy. You can't see envy. Mm -hmm. You can't even see lust. Mm -hmm. But when ignorance wow. is mixed with jealousy, envy, mm -hmm. and lust, it becomes toxic. There's going to be a toxic outcome. It's right here in the text. They didn't wash their hands. And the Pharisees was hot about it. And they wanted to, they were looking to find fault. We got to be careful about that. Always looking to find fault. I know. Say it, Brad. Come on. That's what they were doing. Instead of realizing that Jesus is the master. They rather focus on the minor issue of, yes, I believe in washing hands. And I do believe it, that, that you got to tell folks that you got to wash their hands. That's right. But let's not make washing the hands the biggest deal. That's right. Or other things that fall into the category mm. of tradition. I mean, folks bicker and fight each other, and the relationship is destroyed behind things that are tradition. Yeah. And not doctrine. Now, if we have a fight about doctrine, then let's get it all. We can get it all. Because I'm going to defend the faith. Amen. Amen. But, but when you look at this particular text, and you see that, that, that the Pharisees were challenging Jesus' disciples because they had not washed their hands. Well, all, we, all they were trying to do was find fault. That's right. That's right. Too many times church people end up quarreling and fighting and bickering over non-doctrinal issues. Amen. 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 And the problem is, is that we're majoring on the minors. Amen. Did you get that? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, let me just tell you real quick the remedy to that. Okay, now, I don't know everything. Amen. And neither do you. Amen. The only one that knows everything is God. Amen. That's it. Amen. Amen. And so there are, some, there are a lot of things that I am ignorant about. Amen. Amen. I'm too. Amen, my sister. <laughs> there are a lot of things that I am ignorant about. Amen. Even things that I should know. Right, right. I'm still ignorant about it because I, I only have a little bit of knowledge about it. Amen. It's like a, um, um, sometimes it's like I'm, I'm, I'm in a ship and I'm in the water and I'm going toward an iceberg and can't see it. And some of us are like that too. Here's the point. But my ignorance, when it is mixed, when it's mixed with faith, when my ignorance is mixed with faith, and it's mix, mixed with grace, and when it's mixed with mercy, amen, amen, then the outcome is subject to be miraculous. Amen. Listen now, look at the difference. We're all ignorant. Because there's only one omniscient one. There's only one omniscient one. Now, when, when ignorance is mixed with jealousy, envy, and lust, the outcome is going to be toxic. It's going to be dangerous. It's going to be destructive. But when ignorance is mixed with mercy and with grace and with faithfulness, a a amen. The outcome is subject to be miraculous. Amen. Because, because you listen, when the Christian is grounded in the Word of God, a amen, he's still not going to know everything. Amen. But when he leans and depends on God's Word and is faithful, amen, and is merciful, a a amen, then, then guess what? God will make a way. The Bible says in Romans chapter number 8, verse 28, all things work together for good to them that love God 
to them that are the call according to his purpose. I hope you get what I'm trying to tell you. Don't major in the minors or the minors. Amen. Amen. These Pharisees, Jesus pointed it out. He said that, okay, you want to major on the minors. That's what he was telling them. You want to major on the fact that my disciples have not washed their hands. Okay. He said, he said but, but here, here, you got a problem here. Jesus is omniscient. He knew that those same folks that were trying to find fault with his disciples were, were trying to, they, they, they had money. Pharisees and scribes, they, they, they did have money. You, you, you remember when Jesus now was uh, uh, on the cross, it was one of the Pharisees that asked for his body. It was one of the Pharisees that had enough money where he could use his grave to, 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 to bury Jesus. Pharisees had money. Amen. A -a Amen. And, and instead of using the money, I'm back here now, chapter 7. Instead of using the money to take care of their parents. Amen. They claimed that the money that they received was a gift. And because it was a gift, it was a gift to be used for uh, the uh, temple purposes. But at the same time, their parents were suffering, wow. Wow. Were, were, were in poverty, living in poverty, living in great need. But these Pharisees had the money that they had and money that they needed or money that they just had. It was theirs. And instead of using it for their parents, All right. All right. amen, they, 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 they used the term Corbin. They said, oh, no, no, Corbin. And, and, and Jesus taught and he said, listen, if you do that, you are making the word of God of none effect. Amen. And he called them hypocrites. Amen. And, amen. I'm, 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 amen. It's right here in the, your, your word. Amen. He called them hypocrites. And later on in the text, he then described, he said, it's not what goes into the heart. It's not what you put in. You see, he was now dealing with the fact that, okay, their hands may have been dirty, and they were about to eat. And, 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 and Jesus said, listen, it's not what goes in your body that defiles a man. It's not what, what you put in. See, it's what comes out. It's what's in your heart. Amen. And then he had a list of things. You see it there, he says here, Verse number 18, and he said unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man, it cannot defile him, because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the draw, purging all meats, Listen, when God designed us, he knew what was in the world. He knew what we were going to have to face. He knew that we were going to have to smell some terrible things and be around some very foul things. But it's not what comes in. And, and listen, I understand that there are all kinds of germs and diseases and things of that nature that we can contract. But if you put something in your mouth, you better ask God to bless it. And if you ask God to bless it, amen, whatever it is that is killing other folk, it may not touch you. It may not harm you at all. Amen. Because God is a God who has power over everything. However, he says what comes out of the heart. What comes out of the heart is the things that defile. He says here, and he said, that which cometh out of the man that defileth the man, for from within, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts. Yeah. Amen. 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 Adulteries, fornication, murders, thefts, covetedness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. He says, all these evil things come from within and defile the man. I thank God. I'm done. I'm finished. I thank God. I thank God because when he went to Calvary, all these things, amen, some of which some of us, probably most all of us, have engaged 
did at some point in time. Right. Amen. Amen. But, but because of his shed blood, yeah. amen, because of his suffering there at the cross, yeah. all of the stuff that we have ever done in our life that have offended God, the yeah. blood of Jesus, yeah. the blood of Jesus cleanses us, yeah. makes us fit vessels for his spirit. Amen, somebody. Amen. So I'm glad today. That, that, and, and I'm trying the best I can. I know I don't know everything, but I am trying the best I can to major on the most important things. Amen. I don't want to major on the minors. And I encourage you, don't major on the minors. There's too much work that we've got to get done. God is calling us to, to, to go out there and tell a dying world that there is a reality in serving Christ Jesus. We might not see him. And yes, there are those, um, what are they called? Scoffers. Yeah, these scoffers, they're always, they, they, they want to criticize you. Yeah. Amen. They want, to, they want to call you all kinds of names except the name that God has given us. Amen. amen. But I want you to know that one of these old days, yeah. amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. amen, everything that's in darkness is going to be revealed. Yeah. It's going to come out in the light. Yeah. Amen. Jesus is going to crack the sky one of these old days. Yeah. Amen. He's going to come back for a church. Yeah. Amen. He's coming back for me. And I hope you can say, he's coming back for you. Amen. amen. And when he does, he's going to remove me from this place. Amen. amen. I'm not ready, amen, to go, amen. But if he's ready to come get me, I can be ready. Amen. 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 So, so let's just, let me just let you know, don't major on the monitors. Amen. We got a lot of work to do. Amen. And God needs you. Amen. Or strike that. God wants you. We need God. He really don't need us. Amen. He wants us. He does. He we loves us. And the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth or would not perish, but should have. Everlasting life. Amen. That sounds good to me. 